pregnant Meghan Markle was absent from a morning engagement on day six of the Duke and Duchess's royal tour of Oceania following a hectic five days. The Duchess of Sussex was due to join Prince Harry to support the Invictus Games cyclists but decided to cut back on her duties after a jam-packed start to the tour. A royal aide said, she's feeling fine, but resting. The royal couple are six days into their tour of Oceania which will see them visit Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Tonga. The aide added, after a busy program, the Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchess's schedule slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and a half of the tour. The Duke will attend the cycling as scheduled this morning, and the Duchess will join him for this afternoon's engagements. The Duke will continue with the engagements on Fraser Island as planned. The pregnant Duchess, who announced she will be having a baby last week, had a late night on Saturday after the Invictus Games opening ceremony started later than expected due to weather. Meghan is now expected to miss a series of events over the remainder of the tour. A source said they just want to pace her as both she and Prince Harry have a lot of events left. Prince Harry told competitors that Meghan is resting back at home during his morning event. Being pregnant takes its toll he added. However, the Duke and Duchess will attend a reception held by the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison later today. Meghan is now expected to skip some of the events during the couple's planned visit to Fraser Island on Monday. The couple were expected to visit the island's rainforests attend a welcome to country smoking ceremony with the traditional owners of Kagari, the Butchola people and the Premier of Queensland, visit one of the island's lakes. The pair will then travel to Kingfisher Bay by boat. Kensington Palace is yet to announce whether any engagements after day six and seven of the tour will be changed. Meghan is still expected to travel with Harry to Fiji and Tonga but it is possible there may be some adjustments to her program there as well. The royal couple visited at Cockatoo Island, where they watched the Jaguar Land Rover driving challenge with the Duke even snapping pictures on his phone. The official opening for the Games has been delayed by a huge tropical storm. Organizers took to Twitter to confirm that the tropical weather event arriving in Cindy would delay the opening of the Games, where Harry is due to make a speech. Both opted for a black shirt with the emblem of the Games which is the event where the pair went public with their relationship last year. Pregnant Meghan threw on a chic white blazer and teamed it with black skinny jeans and tortoise shell sunglasses, while Harry wore grey trousers and brown boots. The event is an international Paralympic-style sporting event for wounded, sick or injured members of the armed forces, as well as veterans. Prince Harry created the Games after being inspired by the U.S. Warrior Games a similar sporting event for injured service personnel. When they arrived, Harry put an affectionate hand on his wife's lower back as they walked along the jetty to meet with the competitors and their support staff. They then watched the races get underway before awarding the drivers with their well-deserved medals. The royal couple also spent some time playing with remote control cars with children who had traveled to the event from around the world with the athletes. Harry appeared to enjoy the toys as much as the kids as he was pictured laughing and even feigning annoyance as he gestured his arms in frustration. Earlier in the day, Harry and Meghan unveiled a Sydney War Memorial 84 years in the making at the Anzac Memorial. It commemorates the sacrifices of First World War soldiers from Australia and New Zealand was initially designed in the 1930s. But the Great Depression meant the vision of artist Bruce Dellett was shelved. It features a four-tier cascading waterfall on the Liverpool Street side of the monument. Harry wore the white tropical dress of his regiment the Blues and Royals, complete with medals and sword. Meghan was wearing a stunning black dress by New Zealand designer Emilia Wickstead and matching hat designed by Philip Tracy. They were met by Prime Minister Scott Morrison alongside Premier of New South Wales Gladys Berejiklian and David Elliott, the Minister for Veterans Affairs on an overcast Sydney morning. There were also crowds along Liverpool Street, while other people, and a cardboard cutout of Harry and Meghan, watched on from balconies as the royals arrived. 
twins Crystal and Sienna Dawson presented the royal couple with a medallion and a painting during their visit to the Anzac Memorial. The girls, aged nine, are from the Kumari Aboriginal dance troupe and both said they were nervous about meeting and performing for Harry and Meghan. Crystal, who did an Aboriginal art floral painting said, they said hi and nice to meet you. The medallion, presented by Sienna, said play the game, the model of the Beverly Hills Public School which they attend. She said, I didn't want to dance at first, but then it was fun. Their mother, Connie, said, I think it was very overwhelming for them, as a parent. It was a very important ceremony and it's important that the next generation coming through should be part of it. The memorial was first opened in 1934 by Harry's great, great uncle and namesake, Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester. The plaque unveiled by the Duke said, opened by the grandson of the Queen, the wording echoes the original which said opened by the son of the King and was designed to focus on the people lost, not the person who opened it. Retired General David Hurley, Governor of New South Wales told the 100,000-strong crowd, let silent contemplation be your offering. These words found at the entrance to the Hall of Silence evoke the sense of loss and grief that this memorial represents to the people of NSW. A choir sung I vow to thee my country Princess Diana's favorite hymn from her school days, which was sung both at her wedding in 1981 and her funeral in 1997. The Sussex is laid a wreath with a handwritten note which read, in grateful memory of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and in recognition of the men and women for whom the scars of war endure. They then toured the hall of service containing 1,700 soil samples from each town, suburb and district in New South Wales listed as an address for First World War enlistees. The completion of the extension, which cost £22 million coincides with the 100th anniversary of the cessation of hostilities in the war. The couple had avoided any PDAs earlier this morning at the ceremony and were seemingly making up for it as they walked hand in hand around the event. Saturday marks the couple's fifth day of the royal tour and yesterday things reached new heights for Harry as he and three Invictus Games competitors climbed Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Duke swapped the New South Wales standard for the Invictus flag at the top of the landmark, which towers 440 feet, 134 meters, above the water. It took him 13 minutes to ascend the 464 steps to the top of the bridge along the east side, before crossing the central walkway to raise the flag which flapped in the breeze. Earlier on Friday, Harry and Meghan visited another Sydney landmark, Bondi Beach. There. The couple met representatives from One Wave to talk about their work on mental health and then visited MacArthur Girls High School to discuss social justice and youth empowerment. Meghan Markle has compared pregnancy to having jet lag after wowing crowds on Bondi Beach, Sydney. The Duchess of Sussex gave an insight into her pregnancy during an anti-bad vibe circle hosted by mental health campaign group One Wave. Meghan, 37, spoke with 35-year-old Charlotte Connell who is much further along the line at 23 weeks pregnant, about how motherhood has had her waking up at 4.30 a.m. to do yoga. Ms. Connell said, Meghan told me that pregnancy was like having jet lag. She said she was up at 4.30 a.m. this morning doing yoga in her room as she couldn't sleep. It's a bit of a double whammy for her, she said, as she has both the baby and the jet lag to contend with. We both talked about how you feel jet lagged even though you have not traveled anywhere. Even in her jet lag, she got up to do yoga this morning at 4.30 a.m. Physical activity like yoga and surfing is so good for healing your mind. Mental health is something Prince Harry has spoken out on and is a keen campaigner to help raise awareness. Meghan and Harry listened to the group for 10 minutes and shared their own personal experiences with the illness to the local community surfing group. In a statement Kensington Palace said, to turn the tide on stigma surrounding mental health issues, one wave is encouraging people to share their experiences of living with mental health issues and the power of opening up using. Dabri Eulick Whale 37, who took part in the session was full of praise for the relatable royal couple. She said, Oh my goodness, they were just so real, so relatable. They shared their own experiences, 
which was amazing. Shortly after Meghan and Harry had a go at waxing a surfboard as they dipped their toes in the sand at the famous Australian beach. Meghan wore a sleeveless Martin Grant dress with espadrille tie wedges with a garland of flowers around her neck, whilst Harry wore a light blue shirt, beige trousers and espadrilles. The pair are currently on day four of their whirlwind 16-day tour of Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. Tomorrow the royal couple will be on Cockatoo Island where they will be watching the Invictus Games, a competition created by Prince Harry which will see 18 nations represented. Oh, <laughs> oh,